Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? So uh, I'm going to tell you something about uh, the, the data visualization in general, and then uh, about how we visualize the test results on our project. Uh, why do we need to visualize data? Because people like pictures. People hate piles of numbers, digging through huge XML files or long JSON strings. The picture is the best. We are visual creatures. But we need to visualize the data in a way in which our customer, the audience, can process this data very quickly, very easy, and in a correct way. Uh, at first, one example from real life. Uh, when I was building my house, a sales representative came to me and told me that he has the best thermal isolation for houses on the, on the market. Uh, he told me that it is 10% better than the second product on the market and showed me this picture. Uh, it is not a graph, it's a picture, blue box with two lines. Uh, from this point, I wasn't very interested in his product because you can see. <laughs> but I was curious about the price, so I asked him how much is it, and he told me that it is 30% more expensive than the second product. So I asked him to leave then. But uh, I was curious, and uh, later in the evening, I googled for the information about these products because I wanted to compare them and find out uh, if he was, uh, was lying to me or whatever. I found very easily the data about these products, and by a few clicks, I created this graph in this case. Uh, there are the same two lines, but they are surrounded by information. I mean, axis with titles, numbers, and physical quantities, and the title. Now I have full information about the product, and I have to confess he was right. It is 10% better, but still 30% more expensive, so I choose the blue line, <laughs> finally. Uh, uh, when we are talking about visualization, we also must talk about design. Uh, in general, there are four attributes of good design. Uh, it must be beautiful, uh, because the people must like it. it must be, uh, they must be attracted by it. It must be gratifying to enjoy it. It must be logical. Everything should be on the right place. It must be self-descriptive, no need to explain it. And it must be functional. The interactions between components must work and it must fit into the bigger picture. Uh, beside these four attributes, uh, we also should choose the right point of view on the data. Look at these two pictures. There are the same objects. Uh, which of them do you like the best? Which is better for you? Right one or left one? I, I can't say. It depends on what we can show. Can we focus on details or can we focus on the bigger picture? We must decide before we start visualization. And also, uh, we must know the audience uh, which will process uh, our visualization. Who could be a customer for our data? It could be management, marketing, customers, engineers, anybody from the crowd. Uh, we need to pro uh, visualize the data in a way that this intended audience can process. So that's enough in general. And now about our project. What do we visualize? Of course, we visualize data. A lot of data, 30 gigabytes of data twice a day. It's quite a huge amount. Uh, at the beginning, I must confess that we don't do it in uh, 
optimal way because we are limited by our customer, by his needs, by infrastructure, by money, by people, and so on and so on and so on. But it is not important uh, for this presentation. I work on the project uh, called FDIO, Fast Data Input Output. If you are interested in it, you can find everything on this link, fdi.io. And I'm working on a project which performs continuous system and integration testing of the vector packet processor. CSIT is the framework with tests, performance tests mainly. A uh, vector packet processor is a piece of software which processes packets. Very simple explanation. I will not go into details, it's not necessary for it, for this presentation. Uh, in particular, we visualize performance test results for product release. It is done every three months with, uh, when the new release is released and we need to test it. Uh, mainly, we include there packet throughput, packet latency, and speed up multi core throughput. Uh, speed up is, uh, in general, the increase of performance when we increase the number of processor cores which process the packets. And uh, on daily basis, actually twice a day, uh, we visualize performance over a defined time period. Uh, we call it packet throughput trend. Uh, the details will follow soon. Uh, where the data come from? This is very, very, very simplified picture. I use it at elementary schools. But uh, in principle, Mr. Jenkins runs thousands of performance tests on our test beds. Uh, it generates a robot framework output XML files. Uh, these files are somewhere stored. And then when they are visualized, the information is read from these uh, XML files and processed. And um, we generate a lot of plots, tables, files. And uh, as a final step, we use Sphinx, which puts everything together and publishes on the web. Uh, what we use, usual standard Python tools, NumPy, Pandas, Plotly, Sphinx. Uh, I will not bother with these tools. You might know them better than me. So let's go to plots. Uh, we use Plotly. Do you know Plotly? I'm sure you, you heard this at least. Uh, we use Plotly in offline mode uh, to generate various kinds of plots. Uh, as I said, hundreds of uh, dynamically generated plots are put together by Sphinx to create a test report. I'll try to... Oh. For example, this is uh, example, you can see, uh, this is trending, pardon. This is the report. Uh, uh, here is a packet throughput, I will talk about it later. And uh, we also generate uh, packet throughput trending. Uh, everything you can find uh, on the web when you start with this FDIO. All information is there. Okay. Uh, uh, in general, we run all tests, all performance tests, 10 times for this purpose, because we want to pre prevent any anomalies, any high caps, and so on. So uh, we have 10 results from the same tests. Uh, we calculate average value and standard deviation, and then we work with these uh, values. Uh, the elementary information about the performance is visualized using statical box plot. Here is an example. Uh, this is a solution out of the box because it is prepared in Plotly, so we just push the data into it and Plotly generates these plots for us. Mm, it's very simple and fast. Uh, this 
statistical box plot provides us all necessary information. Uh, statistical information, I mean minimum, maximum, median, outliers, and so on. This information is showed in uh, hover box. Uh, I will show it uh, later. Uh, together with this, we have uh, on, uh, on X, uh, axis indices to test cases, which are listed uh, in the legend. And on Y axis, we have packet throughput in mega packets per second. Uh, the tests for particular graph are uh, chosen and organized uh, in groups. Uh, this grouping is showed in the title of the plot. I mean the line at the top, L2, SV, 3N, uh, and so on. The information there is about the domain, a topology, three node, uh, in this case, a processor architecture, Skylake, NIC, X710, and so on and so on. Uh, as you can see, when you compare these two plots, uh, we, can, uh, we can see here also the variability of the data. Uh, we run the test 10 times. If we get 10 times the same number, we see here only a thick line. Sometimes there could be an outlier, but here on the left side, it is uh, near the median, so we can say that the results are stable, uh, repeatable, and we can rely on these results. On the other hand, when we see quite a huge box, as uh, on the other graph, uh, the variability of the results of the same tests uh, is quite big, and we cannot rely on a single result. Uh, and it can mean that there's an issue. Uh, there might be issue in tested functionality, it is unstable. It, there can be issue in test, in uh, configuration, in infrastructure. There could be a lot of reasons why this happens, and we need to deal with it and find the reason and correct it. Uh, when we measure the packet latency, uh, we get minimal, average, and maximal values of packet latency. Each of them has 10 samples. We calculate average values and standard deviation and then display it. The best way uh, we found to display this information is a scatter plot with error bars. The average value is displayed as a dot, and minimal and maximal values are displayed as error bars. Uh, there are two uh, of each because we measure latency in both directions of data flows. So we have two blue, two green, and so on and so on. The rest of the graph is the same as the previous example. Uh, speed up, as I said, it is increased in performance, in, in this case uh, packet throughput, uh, when we change the number of processor cores used for packet processing. Uh, for this purpose, we use one, two, and four cores. The results are displayed as dots, and the dots are uh, connected by lines. In ideal case, these lines uh, would be straight, but this is not idle, ideal world. So they are not straight, so we edit dashed lines, which show how it would be in real, uh, in ideal world. And also, uh, each uh, software is limited by hardware, uh, and the limitation for us are uh, NIC, LINK, and PCI bus throughput. We also uh, show these limitations, uh, only the nearest limitations, because, for example, uh, PCI Express limit is uh, far, far away from it, and uh, the graph wouldn't be uh, readable. Uh, some our visualizations present three-dimensional data. Uh, for example, uh, packet throughput is measured in a configuration with two changing parameters. These changing parameters are on X and Y axis and packet throughput on Z axis. Uh, this graph uh, you see now, uh, I created in Excel as an example. I used, as you can see, 
three-dimensional bar graph, uh, and it shows the ideal uh, case. Uh, we can say that this is good for the visualization, but imagine if we have 20 bars in a row. It could be quite overcrowded, and also the data labels wouldn't be very well, uh, very well uh, readable. And it can happen that one bar is hi hidden behind another one, so we couldn't see it. And the biggest problem is that Plotly doesn't support three-dimensional bar graphs. Uh, at, at the beginning, I, I was surprised. Why? It's usual. It's in Excel. It must be supported. So I googled for the answer, why, and I found a very simple answer. It is not needed. And they are right, because they have better solution. Heat map. Uh, heat map uh, displays three-dimensional data in two-dimensional space. The screen is two-dimensional. Piece of paper is two-dimensional. So why not to use it? And it is much better readable. At one quick site, you will get all the information you need. In our case, the biggest value is in a top top left corner, and it increase, uh, decreases downwards and to the right. So if there's an anomaly, you will spot it in milliseconds. And also you can read the values. They look like table. And the scale on the right side is just to help. So we don't need bar graphs in Plotly. Uh, trending graphs. Uh, trending graphs show us packet throughput over 90 days, three months. This, uh, this, uh, this is the time period we choose because it is the time between two, uh, between two releases. Uh, the, uh, the data points, uh, which are again average uh, of uh, 10 uh, samples, are displayed as, as dots, and trend lines <coughs> are calculated by Jump AVG algor algorithm, which was developed by our colleague Vratko, who is sitting here in the first row. If you are interested in this algorithm, it is very interesting. You can ask him then. Don't ask me. Ask him. I think the price is one beer per question. <laughs> but, but you can ask only yes, no questions. Uh, uh, what is important in the visualization of a trend are changes in the trend. If it goes well, nobody cares. But we want to spot the changes. Uh, using this algorithm, it is quite easy to spot changes, but we decided to highlight them by, by circles, and we mark progressions by red circles and uh, regressions by red circle and progression by green circle. Uh, these changes can be easily spotted by testers or developers, so we can immediately know the, uh, the effect of merge changes on the product performance, and in case of regression, we can react on it, we can fix it, and so on. Because, of course, we want the highest possible performance, so we want only progressions. Uh, before questions and answers, I'll show you uh, examples, real examples, because these were only pictures. Okay, so this is trending, but back to packet throughput. This is the hover information. Uh, here is listed everything you need to know about the test results. The legend includes also the number of runs, because sometimes tests can fail, so there will be not 10, but only nine runs. Uh, latency, 
uh, there's a little bit more information. Uh, there's also uh, direction, test name, and the measured and calculated values. And here is speed up. Uh, you can see there are number of rounds, mean value, difference against ideal case, and speed up. This is ratio. So uh, it should be one to four, but you can see different numbers there. This is heat map. Again, okay, number of rounds, throughput, standard deviation. It, it is pretty stable because it is zero. And the number of tests. Uh, you can see Y and X letters uh, in the title, but in the hover information, there are numbers calculated from these numbers. And this is trending. Uh, here, because it, it is trend over a time, we have timestamp, date and time, uh, then value, then reference to the product build, reference to the Jenkins job, uh, Jenkins build which produces data for it, and testbed which was used to generate them because there can be also differences depending on the test beds. Okay, so that's it. Questions? So the question um, that got most votes, how do you integrate Sphinx with Plotly and CI? Uh, I guess continuous integration? Uh, at first, we generate all elements. We call them elements. I mean plots, tables, and uh, files. We have also static content, text like methodology, and uh, release notes, and so on. It, they are RST files. And then we run Sphinx uh, above these um, generated files. Sphinx just uses them and uh, generates the web page, like this one, for example. This is the main page. Uh, everything is integrated in a very simple shell script. It uh, starts at first generation of elements and then generation of the whole web page using Sphinx. And who uses these visualizations? Um... Mm, these visualizations, uh, visualizations are public accessible because this is public project. Um, type this uh, uh, link to your browser, you will get it. Uh, it is used by developers who are interested in the results. Uh, they are used by us because we also need to know the results, uh, the performance, the trend, and so on. Uh, it is used by managers who, who pay for it, of course, because they need product with highest possible performance, so they are curious about the performance. And also public. This is a public project. Uh, is your visualization solution open source? Uh, yes. As Everything is open source. Uh, when you go to FDIO, this is a starting point, you will find links to all information, including uh, source code. And which test results are more relevant? Average situation scenario or worst case scenario? Uh, what is most interesting for you? Uh, we measure performance uh, in uh, various configurations, but uh, these configurations are not worst case, best case. Uh, we, we just configure the product in a way how it is used in everyday life and measure the performance. Uh, and could you talk about the, um, how the graphs are defined? Yeah, uh, the graphs, not only graphs, but uh, all elements uh, which are used to generate this page are defined in YAML files. And I, I called it model, and this model describes uh, what should be 
visualized, which data, uh, how they should be visualized, so which kind of plot, for example, uh, will be used, which additional information will be there. For, for example, uh, here is the title with throughput, it's common for all, and then this grouping, what else? Uh, the order in which are displayed is defined there. It's quite a huge YAML file because we have 800 plots plus tables plus files. So quite long definition. So it's a lot of reading. <laughs> so why, why did you choose Plotly uh, over other options like uh, Bokeh or other? Uh, when we started with this, Plotly was the best solution for us and it was quite easy to integ integrate into our uh, framework. Uh, we are thinking on better solution because, as I said, this is not very optimal. We don't use database, for example, because of infrastructure. But uh, when we have better infrastructure, we want to implement it using uh, database. And uh, we are thinking about Dash, which is something like Plotly, but uh, client-server based. Um, so you are using robot framework mm -hmm. um, yes. to run performance tests. So why uh, and why are not, why are you not using uh, tools that are uh, uh. that are already made like JMeter or Gatling? Again, uh, this is this is quite a long project. I'm on this project more than uh, three years, and it was. Uh, started a long time before it, uh, and they used a robot framework uh, that time. Now it is quite difficult to change it, so we need to live with a robot framework. Uh, are you planning to uh, change the architecture in the future? It's, it's not in there, um, I'm just elaborating. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I can, uh, I, I don't know mm -hmm. at, at this time. Uh, okay, there is some statist statistician there. So does it make sense to detect outlier on a data set of 10 points? Mm. Yeah, it's quite quite small statistical set. You are right. But uh, when we generate these uh, results, it, uh, for the report, it takes three weeks to get 10 rounds. So it would be much better to have 100, but it's impossible. Uh, the outliers are displayed by default when we use this uh, static, statistical box plot. Uh, but uh, when, when we process the data uh, internally, we don't care about outliers. They are only displayed in this because it is implemented this way in Plotly. So uh, there is a thank you for you. Um, uh, it would be uh, nice to integrate it, uh, this into Czech's page on GitHub. So uh, is it there already or not? No. Not yet, so maybe. Uh, that's a good tip. And uh, thank you very much for your talk. Um, thank you. And uh, to you all have a great lunch. And um, the Aula Magna will be open again at 12.55. Uh, so thank you, uh, Tibor Frank, and big applause.